Hello all my beautiful people of the world, it is the Creative Rush here, and today is part two on how to make a third person character in your own game. In our last episode, way back when, we played The Last of Us, and we perfectly demonstrated what kind of character we're going to be making today. So without further ado, let's get into Unity. If you follow the tutorial correctly, you should end up with something like this. You'll have a character in your scene with the camera set to the right of him, the camera rotate around him. As soon as you start moving though, your character will rotate as the, at the same y-axis as the camera. And then if you hold right click, your character will aim, the camera will zoom in, a UI crosshair will appear, and your character will move more slowly. Your character will also rotate around when you aim. So you're going to want to start off with a blank scene with just the main camera. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to Create, 3D, Terrain. We're really just creating our area, our world right now. And after you do that, you're going to want to color the terrain. So go up to the paintbrush, click on that, edit textures, add texture, select, and you can pick anything here, but I usually go with Grass Hill. After you've done that, you're going to go to re Edit, Render Settings, and then Skybox. And you're going to pick any of these. I usually go with Sunny Sky 3. This pretty much just gives your game a sky. It makes it not just the pure dark blue. It's pretty boring. Our scene's still a little dark, so we're going to go to Create, Light, and Directional Light. Now our scene's nice and lit, and we can get to making our third-person controller. To start, and this is going to seem a little odd, you're going to go want to go into Standard Assets, if I could find Standard Assets, Character Controllers, and you're going to want to go with a first-person controller. Not a third-person controller, but a first-person controller, and you'll see in a second. We're going to rework the coding so that this will work with a third person, well not with third person controller, we're going to turn it into a third person controller. The way you'll see it in The Last of Us. Our thing will work, our uh, coding will work with the first person controller, but you won't be able to see it the way it is, so we'll need to change the model. I've gone ahead and downloaded a model already called Base Mail. I'll leave a description in the link if you want to, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download it. But it just gives you a guy with a bunch of animations. So we're going to use that for our base model. And we're going to try to make him about as big as the first person controller. I think it's about that size already though. You're going to want to line your character up. Again, you don't need the model for this, but you won't be able to see the change without it. Move him to the side a little bit. Maybe up a tad smitch. Alright, after you have him lined up, you're going to attach him to the first person controller and then delete graphics. Also, you're going to want to go ahead and delete the main camera that's not in your first person controller. This is because it screws up the script when you use it and it looks for that main camera instead of the one we're using now. Let's go ahead and delete that. Now you should have this character. You're going to go ahead and delete mouse look from the first person controller. In the main camera, you're going to delete mouse look. Now you just have a character with a camera that does nothing. And we're going to change that, but first we need to create empty game object and align it where we want our camera. So we're going to put our camera around our guy's neck. And that's where it's going to be anchored. So yeah, we're going to anchor our camera about right here to our character, maybe a little lower. Actually, a little back. Right here. And we're going to rename this Axis. So this camera, I'm going to drag it back. You don't have to. It's going to look a little bit like this when we're all done. So you're going to go to your main camera. And I've created a script called Mouse Orbit OTS or Over the Shoulder from the typical Mouse Orbit script or default Mouse Orbit script you see in Unity. I'll open both of those up so you can see them. So 
So here's the regular mouse orbit script. There's a lot of stuff, I'm not going to go over it because Unity already comes with it. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into our own script. Or you could just go in and edit uh, the regular mouse orbit script as it is. But you'll have the variables over here. We're going to add two new variables. So first we're going to add var x offset equals 0, 0.0. And then we're going to add the same thing, only we're going to put y offset equals 0, 0.0. Down here where you see 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0, we're going to change those to x offset and y offset. What that will do is these become variables that you'll see in your inspector and you can change those without having to go and change this coding. Save that file and it'll take a second to load. Alright, so you're going to want to go ahead and drag mouse orbit OTS into your main camera. you're going to go down to where the script is where it says target you're going to select axis also put axis into the first person controller going to make the target axis distance we're going to put about two because that's about where the last of us is and where it says x offset we're going to put 0 0.8 this will set the camera to the right of the of the character if we go into play mode we will see that the camera rotates around the character like we want. But there is one problem. When we start to move, I'm going to hit the move forward button. It'll move the direction it's facing. The character does not move the way we want him to. There's a really easy fix to that, and it's the script I have called Move Rotate. Let's open that up. I'll show you how it works. Alright, so here's move rotate. Start off has the variable aim speed, which is float. This variable is to show how fast your character will rotate around when you move. Then we have function update update if input get axis vertical. This is showing that when the either up or down is held, the script will work. Then these two symbols here, that's just to show or. So you can have two inputs, either or will work. Sorry, I'll enlarge that. Input get axis horizontal. This is left and right. So when either vertical or horizontal are held, this script will work. <clears throat> and this is aim. So if aim, which is this, variable aim rotation. Okay, I'll get back to aim in a second. Variable aim rotation I want to cover first. It's vector3 transform dot rotation so transform dot rotation means it's going to change the rotation of an object Euler angles Euler angles are the uh, X Y and Z of an object so aim will be if vector 3 dot Y which will be the Euler angle Y rotation of the object that you attach the script to will equal the camera dot ma the main cameras or camera dot mains Y Euler angle in rotation. And this line right here is just showing what you'll change what it will change and how it will change it. So you're gonna go save that <coughs> and drag it into your first person controller. We're gonna change the aim speed to about eight. If you hit play, you will see that the character rotates around just like it does in The Last of Us. Camera rotates around, and the character, when you move, it'll rotate the character. And that's where the character ends, but we're going to add another feature, and it's the aiming. 
So to start off, we're going to do the characters aiming functions, like the zoom and the changing and speeds and that's the kind of stuff. So we're going to create a script called aim FOV, which is pretty much just field FOV is field of view, and this is just going to be the aiming script. Let's go into that, and I'll show you how it works. We have the variable zoom, which is the field of view while it's zoomed in, which will be 20. <coughs> we have the variable normal, which is what it, the field of view will be when we're not aiming, and the variable smooth. Now the variable smooth is used to show how uh, fast the zoom will take, how quickly it will go. <coughs> so by default, zoom in will be false, also as stated up here. But if input get button fire two and fire two is right click, then zoom in will equal true. So if zoom in equals true, which it's stating here, then get component camera. So it's saying if it's equals true, then camera's field of view will lerp to zoom. And I'll lerp that again. I don't know why it keeps popping up uh, in a small window. All right, so equal zoom. But if it doesn't equal this or else, then it will equal normal. I'll scroll over here so you can see what's over here, so you can write it down. All right, so you're gonna save the script and go and drag it onto your camera. We don't want the zoom to be quite 20, that's really far in, so we're going to change it to about 35. And change the smooth to about 15. <coughs> if you hit play, you'll be able to see that our camera zooms in just like it does in The Last of Us. Hold and right click, zooms in. Now we got to be able to change the speed when you aim. This is going to be used by a script called aim speed. Let's open that up. So we have two variables, walk speed and aim speed. Walk speed set to seven because that's how fast we want our character to go when we're not aiming. And then we have aim speed set to three and a half, which is how fast it's going to go when we are aiming. So CH motor or character motor, as I say it here, for CH character controller equals component get character controller. They're just saying that this variable is the character controller. Variable speed equals walk speed, that's by default. But if the character motor is grounded, which means that the character is touching the ground, and get input fire two, which is right click as we've discussed before, by the way, this NN, <coughs> unlike the two lines, this means both of them need to be uh, present in order for the script to work, not just either. But if both of these are active, then speed will equal aim speed, or 3.5. If that happens, then ch motor dot movement dot max forward speed equals speed, or aim speed now, these ones we'll change that speed. So we'll have the max forward speed, max backward speed, and max sideways speed all change. <clears throat> Go save that, file save, and drag it into your character. That's set the settings we want. So if we go into play mode, our character will move slower when we aim. We move at a seven, and then we go to aim, we move at a three and a half. Now there's one other issue we have at the aiming, and it's that when we aim, our character doesn't rotate around. This is a really easy fix, and we're going to use the same script we use for the character movement rotation. We're just going to call it aim rotate. It's the same script, only instead of the input get axis vertical and get input axis vertical, 
I mean horizontal, we're going to change it to get button fire two. Again, this is right click. Go save that and drag it to your character. We're going to want the we're going to want the aim speed to be a little bit higher because it usually is in most games as it was in the last of us. So we're going to change it to 15. Go into play mode and our character will rotate around with the camera when we go to aim. Turn around like this. Go to aim. It rotates around. Same as when he moves. Now finally we're going to do the crosshair that only appears when you aim. As it did in The Last of Us. Because again, this is The Last of Us tutorial. It's going to go to create, UI, and image. I'm going to reuse the same crosshair as I did the last episode on the uh, creating multiplayer UI. But it doesn't have to be white this time. It could be any color. That last episode had to be white because it's going to be changing colors and Unity detects white the best for changing colors. We're going to rename that crosshair just so I can keep things all nice and tidy. And we're going to want to attach a script called crosshair appear. Let's go ahead and show you that in mono develop. So we have variable aim image, which is the UI image right here. If input dot get if the, sorry, if input dot get button fire two, then aim image will equal true. This means that if fire two or again right click is held down, then aim image is visible or equals true. Else, which means or else, uh, aim image will equal false. We're going to go ahead and drag that into a crosshair. Then you want to go down to aim image, select crosshair. Then we go into play mode, and you'll see that we have a crosshair that will appear only when we aim, and that is very big. We're going to go ahead and scale that down real quick. Scale, and we're going to go to the canvas, set our UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Uh, see how it looks here. <coughs> All right, now if you go into play mode, you will see that the crosshair will only appear while you're aiming. And that, my friends, is how you create a fully functional third-person controller. Hey, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, why not leave a like? Also, if you want to keep up to date on my latest content, hit the subscribe button right here. And if there are any fun games you want me to play, or if there's anything you want to learn about making your own games, leave it in the comments way down below. I'll see you all guys in the next video.